This is a Burroughs calculator, probably from the 1920s. It has a full keyboard in nine columns, and beautiful octagonal keys in black and white. The case is black metal, which sits on feet with a gradual slope towards the user. There's a display at the bottom where you can read the answer. The Burroughs calculator doesn't print, but its big selling point was speed. It was designed especially for fast multiplication. The Burroughs company didn't invent the mechanical adding machine, but they were the first ones to build and sell them at scale. By around 1910, they were dominating the market and would continue to be a major player right until the death of the industry. This model was introduced in 1911 and is sometimes known as the Burroughs Class 5 or the Model 5205. Here's a picture of a guy using a Burroughs calculator. See how he's not even looking at his hand? This was meant to be a touch type style machine. If you look closely, you can see that the keys feel different on alternating rows. The even numbers have flat keys, and odd numbers are concave, so you can feel the difference without looking. I found that old picture in a book the Burroughs Company wrote about themselves in 1912 called The Book of the Burroughs. The book also includes a seven-page list of all the different industries that were using Burroughs machines. This list included asbestos muffers, baby carriage muffers, clubs, guano muffers, furriers, insane asylums, Indian traders, jobbers, maltsters, last muffers, mucilage muffers, mustard muffers, neckwear muffers, pickle muffers, screw muffers, talc miners, truss muffers, yeast muffers, witch hazel muffers, and whip muffers. Anyway, the Burroughs calculator is from the early days when Burroughs was known for crank-driven printing adding machines like this one. Those are called listing adding machines, they're just listers. The Burroughs calculator looks similar, but it's actually a completely different mechanism that's optimized for speed. This is called a key-driven machine. That means that your number gets added into the total as soon as you push down on the key. So if I want to do 153 plus 398, I just type in 153, and then type in 398. The answer is on the display at the bottom. On a lister, you have to turn the crank to register your number. Here you just type it in and that's it. That means when you're using it, you can keep your fingers on the keyboard at all times, which makes things much faster. Each key has a big number and a little number on it. When you're adding, you use the big numbers. The little numbers are for subtracting. Uh, they call this subtracting by using the method of complements. So if I want to do 153 minus 87, I do 153 with the big numbers, and then 87 with the little numbers. You'll notice that you have to press the little zero on all the higher digits. So really it's like I'm subtracting 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 8, 7. This extra button all the way to the left is missing its top on my machine, but it just adds one to the leftmost digit, which you need to do whenever you finish a subtraction operation. It doesn't matter which order you type in the digits of the number. In fact, you can even press down all of your digits at the same time, and it works just fine. This last point doesn't seem like a big deal, but it's actually the killer feature of this machine. Doesn't sound like much, but pressing several keys at once allows you to do multiplication much faster than on a traditional hand crank adding machine. Multiplication on machines at this time was always done by repeated addition. Like if I want to do 1337 times 5, I just add 1337 five times. On a lister with a repeat switch, that looks like this. This is a Victor machine from the 1930s. On a key-driven machine like the Burroughs calculator, instead of turning the crank five times, I just type the number five times. Since I can press all the digits at once, this is really fast. You can even do multi-digit multiplications by multiplying digit by digit as you move your hands across. To see how fast this is compared to other machines, let's have a little race. I'll multiply 2,478 times 231 on the Burroughs calculator and also on this Victor listing machine from the 50s. 
This Victor has the more modern keyboard arrangement, which makes it faster than earlier machines, but you'll see it still can't compete with the key-driven model. On both machines, I've practiced this particular problem a few times to make sure I'm doing it as fast as I can. If you look closely, you'll see that the keys have different lengths. The small numbers are on short posts and the big numbers are on longer ones. Actually, the mechanism inside is registering the depth of your key presses. Because of how that works, you can feel little clicks inside the machine as you push down on the keys. It's got a great tactile feel to it that's totally different from pushing buttons on a calculator or a computer, or even on a typical adding machine. It also sounds totally different from the listing machines, which were more common at the time. Because it doesn't have the printing mechanism, the moving parts inside don't actually have to move that much. It makes it much quieter with a mostly a light clicking and none of the crunching and grinding you get from the listers. The carrying mechanism is also really cute. If I fill the display up with nines and then add one, you can see how each digit carries to the next in a cute little cascade. Cute little cascade. My machine is missing the crank on the side, which just resets it to zero. It's a bit of a pain, but you can always clear it just by subtracting the current total. They made it easy to open up this machine for repairs. You can just take out these two hand screws and the case lifts right off. The word calculator is actually a strange choice to put on this machine. Computing machines weren't commonly called calculators until the pocket electronic calculators in the 1970s. These things were generally called adding machines, and the key-driven machines like this were sometimes called comptometers, but not really calculators. But I guess they wanted a brand name for it, and they called it a calculator because it calculates. You know, maybe it sounded like a cool futuristic word to them, I don't know. It makes me wonder what, what people would call a calculator if it was invented today, like as a hot new tech product. Let's see here, I guess uh, Chumby is already taken. So is Quill, a Coxbut, Emrobe, Curiosity, I guess it's cur okay, Curiosity, yeah. Yee yee yee. Uh, calculator was a pretty good choice. Mm -hmm.